my 519 this morning for today's bite of tasting Tucson chefs across town are getting ready for a big four day festival this weekend celebrating the agave plant and its stamp on our culture in southern Arizona. That's right. Many kitchens are going to draw from this heritage to plan their own dinners and events where guests, of course, they're going to be sipping on some of these spirits, but learning about history too, Claire. So I wanted to show you a recipe I learned from chef Nick Creamer at Maynard's Kitchen and Bottle Shop downtown. For this weekend's festival, Chef Nick is subbing out the salmon for a river fish called Barramundi raised up the road in Phoenix. Our starting point is marinating this filet in mezcal derived from the agave. Anytime I get to talk to a guest and they're like, oh my God, I would never have thought to use this ingredient this way, that's a win right there. Time to get the pan nice and hot. Add some salt and pepper, then let it rip to get that sear and crust. Here's a tip Nick shared that I'd never considered before. You can watch as your, your fish starts to cook. So that white line there is always a great indicator for me to kind of know where I'm at with my fish. Nick's gonna finish the sear in the oven to focus on our leafy green sidekick. Saute the shallots, garlic, cubes of butter, get it translucent, and then throw on cold kale so it doesn't wilt quickly. Okay, our bear Mundi is out of the oven. Since this is my cut, and I did wash my hands, Nick let me test its doneness. So here in that center, okay. that's a nice, nice mid-rare, okay. all right? And you can feel on the outside, we're getting closer to a well done because it's a thinner fish. And here's something else I hadn't tried before. Nick says he and his staff make a tepache glaze. It's based on fermented pineapple, mixing it with more garlic, rosemary, and thyme, and then using this to coat our fish. And that will, play really nicely with the mezcal and the chilies that are in that marinade of the fish. A little fast forward, and this is our reward. Our barramundi cooked, laid out on a koji butter sauce, paired with fingerling potatoes, and garnished with local microgreens and Korean chili oil. A multicolor and multicultural experience for sure. You, know, you get the creaminess of the butter, the fattiness of the koji sauce. It kind of helps play with the acid from the white wine. It's got to play, it's a symphony. And just as you need many parts in this symphony, it takes a conductor to get a massive party like this going. So I sat down with Francisco Terrazas at Maynard's. He's the Agave Heritage Festival's program coordinator. All year, he's been curating a whole weekend of experiences that go beyond food. Really, a history that neighbors and visitors to town can touch. Some of the oldest discovered, you know, um, ancestral agave planting beds are maybe a 10 minute drive from where you and I are sitting right now. Even if you're not trying to look at things through the lens of food, there's a lot of different ways that the agave that the agave plant is interwoven into the community here in Tucson. Whether it's um, textiles for clothes and rope and that kind of thing, whether it's from an artistic perspective. That looked delicious. It did. Amazing, yeah. A uh, clean plate club there, uh, as most <laughs> entries on tasting are, of course. Shout out to the crew, by the way. And it's great to talk history with these kind of things. Claire, you can discover all these experiences over the four days the festival is going to be yeah. spread out across town. Francisco says even guests at certain events are going to get to try roasted agave fresh. So, mm. like, texturally, that'll be very interesting. I'll share more details on things you can check out for the festival on kega9.com. Sounds like a great time.